I've been a stand-up comic a really, really long time. It'd be very odd not to be doing something else as well. I'm so excited because the pod squad told us that we have booked Al Murray, the comedian, the historian and the fellow podcaster. And indeed, he's joined us now. Al, how are you? I'm very well. Thanks for having me. I remember back at, God, quite a few years ago. When yeah, you well, this could take a while. Here we go. Guest <laughs> editor. That's guest right. editor at Christmas. As we always have guest editors on the Today programme at Christmas time. And I confess... And it may be true of a few people listening, not that many now, yeah. but a few, that they all went, oh, he's the bloke who's the pub landlord. And when, yes. they, when they said, God, he's got some smart degree in history and he knows all about it, that didn't come as a surprise. Well, you know, it's, uh, I do an excellent <laughs> acting job. What can I tell you? Um, yes, it was New Year's Day, actually, which was um, when it was presented to me, you were going to edit the Today programme. And I'm like, well, this is tremendous. What an honour. And then I realised it was the morning of New Year's Day and it was possibly the shortest straw to be drawn. But there we are. <laughs> but you're, of the many things people will not know about you, Al, you are a war buff. I mean, there's no other way of putting it. You are... You are um, Geeky, yes. you are deeply knowledgeable. You're an author. We're going to get into your new book, which is all about a specific uh, battle. And, yeah, uh, maybe a slightly um, uh, a new version of an old uh, battle. But before we get into that, let's talk about your family's connection, not only to the war, but as I've been yeah. reading this morning, to the BBC. Well, yes. So, I mean, this is this is the peculiar thing. My my grandfather, my father's father, um, Rafe Murray was um, one of the earliest um, sort of uh, BBC journalists in the 30s um, uh, and did did an OB from Crystal... He did the Crystal Palace on fire. You can find it on the BBC website, him going, and I can see the flames from here, and all this sort of thing. And then he did, he did an OB... Um, he held his microphone out of the window in in uh, Czechoslovakia or somewhere when, when the... Um, when, che when the when Czechoslovakia was being carved up in um, after the Munich Agreement, and there's and it's him going out oh, there. I can see soldiers now coming, and and and, it, and 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 then when the war came, he sort of got he was one of those people who got subsumed by the government and ended up in the political warfare executive, working with Sefton Delmer and all those people, and then went into the Foreign Office. So did this mean your childhood, where some people were sitting talking about Manchester United <laughs> results or about in Amol's case the cricket? Yes, y y you were talking history. Oh, oh, absolutely, and my father very much sort of took on that mantle we, we would we would you know we would sit around the table talking about the ultra secret <laughs> you know when 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 for instance when that was all revealed when the when when uh, the the history of enigma and bletchley park became public in the 70s that was that was the sort of stuff my dad was talking about i mean i was properly bitten by the the history bug when he took me to see a bridge too far when i was eight or nine years old and he sat there going, "Oh, that's wrong. There, there, that's they got that's the wrong tank and all this sort of thing." And he and he was quite sort of um, motivated by how how the inaccuracies in the history. So, so that is why you have been to yes. Arnhem and you have written a book about. Arnhem. Yes, yes. So this so this new book is is a um, is about the Battle of Arnhem, which is I think uh, because of the movie A Bridge Too Far and there was a film in the forties as well called There's There's Is the Glory, it, and because it's the last defeat of the Second World War and it's a glorious sort of last stand. It has that. It has that cultural reverberation. Is a thing that has been written about quite a lot, and I want. I've felt since I was. I mean, I did an O level history project about this. I went to the public record office when I was fifteen and read the war diaries. I've always thought at some point I might try and write about it, but the problem is it's been written about a lot. So the the book is. I've decided to just write about one day. It's a nine day battle. So, that, which is one of its appeals for the for the historian is it's short, sort of contained, and it's in a quite a contained area. So you can you and the ten, it involves sort of ten thousand people. So you can actually it's very well researched. You can zoom in on it quite well. But I thought no, I'm going to go for the just the one day, and and end with what would happen next because the thing I always think the problem I always have reading history is that you know we know the outcomes of of. The events, you know, this is 80 years ago next week. We know the outcome. They certainly didn't. And the men, for instance, uh, uh, fighting at the Bridge at Arnhem on the end of the Tuesday night, mid uh, midnight on Wednesday morning, they didn't know. They didn't know what was going to happen that day, even though uh, we do. And I was trying to just get, get under the skin of that feeling. In a way, because <laughs> you still do the pub landlord. He yes, still I do. Yes, he's, he's still on, on tour. He's on he? tour. I mean, we, we, we re resume at the end of the month. Although, um, when I wrote the show in February, I was saying, well, it's going to be a general election this year. I wonder what's going to You know, what, what, what are we going to do about that? Now, of course, there's been one. And I've so. We had to rewrite. There's about, about, a, about a quarter of the show's going to go in the bin and be um, uh, reconfigured. Yeah. But is it uh, that there contrast <laughs> that you have? For people who don't know the character, yeah. lots of people will know the character, but you know, 
your, your kind of uh, alter ego on that stage mm. is the kind of uber patriotic, yes. working class hero. Yeah. Who's got some sort of racy views? He's it, right about everything. Yeah. <laughs> is it the contrast between that and the historian that well, make, makes life actually rather fun? And well, well, well. What's fun? What is fun about it is that, um, I, and I've always because I also write music as the other sort of thing I do. Um, is that if I can't think of any jokes, um, I can take the sort of creative urge and and put it into something else and and, and channel it through something else. I mean, it, it, there are times where I'm in the back of a car on my way to a gig trying to mug up on the thing I need to know about for the podcast, and I sort of think, oh, I've bitten off much more than I can chew here. But actually, it's it's the, everything stimulates everything else. And um, I've been a stand-up comic a really, really long time, and it'd be very odd not to be doing something else as well. I mean, I, you know, when we started doing the podcast, I got a little bit of that sort of stay-in-your-lane stuff, but, I mean, I do have a... I do, I mean... a do have a history degree it's from a very <laughs> from a very long oh, time ago. It's from quite it's a good university you know what, from a very long time ago. That's what's staying in your thing. Do you know what I think? I'm not going to swear. It's sod off. You know what? Yeah, no. If you don't, if you don't like this podcast. Go and listen to another well, that, one. That is how. That you is know what? You don't have. No one's forcing you to. There's no sort yeah, of three line whip. Absolutely. You know?